Hello, welcome to my channel, another Bibliophile Reads. My name is Greg, and I am here with week three of my 100 book challenge. This is where I have to read 100 books before I buy another book. And this week I did take a, uh, an out, or one of the exceptions to the, the book buying. And this came because um, when I order my cat's food from Amazon, and select non-urgent shipping, they give me a $2 digital credit. Now this digital credit is time limited, so it's only good until September, and it's only $2. However, um, The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway was on sale this week for $1.99. So I used my credit to purchase that book. Well, it's not really buying a book, but I did acquire it. But that does work out because I said gifts don't count, and um, since Amazon gave me this $2 credit, it's sort of like a gift. So, what have I been reading this week? The first book that I read was Down Below by Leona Carling Carrington, and this is a memoir of the surrealist painter when she was institutionalized in Spain after World War II. Now, this is basically an interview where she spoke French to a woman and the woman transcribed it and it was later edited down into a book. And as I said, this is her experiences in a mental institution. Um, it was pretty good for what it was. Um, the, the, the mental institutions in Spain at that time were no place you would want to go. Um, at one point, they the doctors deliberately created an abscess in one of her legs so she would be unable to try to escape. Just try that in the United States nowadays. After that, I listened to an audiobook on evil by Terry Eagleton. He is a Marxist philosopher, and he is trying to basically say that evil is real in this world. Not necessarily a spiritual devil evil, but it is a real characteristic that people can have. Um, and now this is mostly a book of literary criticism. He talks a lot about Graham Greene's Brighton Rock and the evil of the main character, Pinky. He also describes the, the character in William Golden's Pinchar Martin um, and how he was just an evil man and how he basically died. Well, I won't tell you too much about the book, but that's what it was. Um, I really was not wholly convinced with his arguments. Um, it's it's a little a li little too down a li little too pat saying that evil is a real characteristic, sort of like blue eyes or brown hair that someone can have. After that, I listened to another audiobook, One Day in the D Life of Ivan Denisovich by Alexander Solzhenitsyn, and this was a reread for me. I originally read this when I was a, I believe, a junior in college. And um, it was not part of my course curriculum. I just picked up a used copy and I started reading it. And I found it so fascinating that um, I read that instead of the, the books I was supposed to read for my classes. So I, I did listen to it again. Um, the first time I read it way back in the 80s, I absolutely loved this book. Um, it floored me. Just the description of life in a prison camp. Um, it's still a very good book. To an excellent book. Um, I did not quite, I was not quite as captivated with it the, this time around, but um, if you have not read this book, I highly recommend it. The next one I finished was also an audiobook, and this was The Iliad of Homer by Elizabeth Van Diver. This is actually college lectures descri describing the Iliad, and I got this from the library to um, basically assist with my reading of the Iliad because I am now in a reading group with the Iliad um, over on Voxer. And this is my copy of the Iliad. I'm on book 11. Um, it's a very fascinating, very fascinating to, to read the Iliad. Um, and the lectures are quite excellent. Um, she goes over a lot of topics that um, the casual reader would, just would not know. My biggest gripe about the lectures are they're too short it's it's six hours 
And as the professor said, she could talk 30 hours about the Iliad and still have more to say. So that was another very good read if you are ever planning on reading the Iliad. Um, it's not translation specific, so whatever translation of the Iliad you pick up, um, these college lectures would do you just fine and uh, greatly increase your learning uh, of reading that book. After that, I read Fat City, and this is the second of my New York Review Books Classics Week. Um, I thought this was going to be a crime novel, but it's actually a novel about boxing. Um, there is something utterly fascinating about the sport of boxing. I've never seen a boxing match. I don't think I would ever want to see a boxing match. But reading about the desperation in boxers is utterly fascinating. And um, this book is actually really well written. Um, I'm sorry, I, I, I did not get some quotes. There were some very good quotes that I, I, I could have read. And um, uh, let's just read one little paragraph here. One night he awoke sitting up in bed with the dusty curtains still on their rod, ripped down and covering his head. In his dream, he had been accompanying a beautiful woman through a train in search of privacy until she had disappeared into some compartment and he ran through the car, trying doors, meeting only a featureless man whom he began to strike. It was all forgotten in a moment of thrashing panic and under the curtains. When he hurled the rod to the floor, a mumbling war swore beyond the wall. And it's just a fascinating book to read. Um, I was not disappointed that it wasn't a crime novel after all. Um, it features two boxers um, trying to be successful in their career and not really making it. So that is another highly recommended book. After Fat City, I finished a book. Now, let me back up for a second. I had originally intended to read another New York Review book classic, um, but I had so many other books that I was reading simultaneously, I just decided to push ahead and finish these books that I was currently reading. And um, I will pick up those uh, other uh, New York Review book classics later on in 2022. So one of the books I finished was The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay by Michael Chabon. I read that on my Kindle. Um, this is part of a group read with uh, Alan at Big uh, Hard Books and Classics. It also had um, Fraser Simon in it. Um, this book was supposed to go on into the end of this month, but um, they said I just had to finish it just because I was reading too many books at once. And this is an excellent story about the golden age of comics and uh, a Jewish immigrant to New York City who becomes very famous um, drawing a uh, comic called The Escapist. And then it leads into his dealings with World War II and afterwards. Um, this book did win the Pulitzer Prize. I, I can see why it won the Pulitzer Prize. It's an excellent novel. After that, I was reading another book, um, 2666 by Robert Bolaño. This is part of a podcast called The Two-Month Review. Um, again, this book was scheduled to be read through the month of December, but I decided to push on and just finish it now. So I had wasn't reading too many books at the same time. Now, this is a book that I have read before, and um, this is a fabulous book. It is technically five novellas strung together as one giant novel, and it sh they should be read together because these novels fit. Um, there are there are scenes in one novella that was picked up in another novella, and it is, it's very nicely done. And I highly recommend this. Um, very briefly, it starts off with um, three literary scholars on a German novelist called Bueno von Archambaldi. And that is a completely fake pseudonym, especially for a German. And then it follows their adventures in Mexico, looking for this author. And some other than novellas follow some of the Mexican people they meet down there. There is a huge chunk in the middle that deals with a, uh, a murder epidemic in this 
city he calls St. Teresa. Now, this is based on real murders in the border city of uh, Citidad Juarez. Um, and I don't know if the murders he describes in this book are based on real murders or entirely fictional, but the murders he describes in this book are exhaustive and detailed. And I have to think of this is that when he's describing a woman that has been murdered, he's describing a real person. And you have to understand that all these marginal women that got killed are real people, or not necessarily real people in the fictional sense, but you have to consider them as real and they had real lives, even if their lives were marginalized. And it finishes up with a description of the life of the, the novelist Archambaldi. Highly recommended. Um, this is, my, as I said, my second time reading this. And I think I need to read it at least one more time in a few years um, before I can fully get a grasp on this novel. So next week is going to be Crime and Mystery Week. Unfortunately, there's not going to be not a lot of mystery in this week. It's going to be just a lot of crime. And the first book I am going to be reading is um, 52 Pickup by Elmore Leonard. Now, if you notice, this is a Library of American edition. And technically, the last month of December is my Library of America theme week. Um, but I have too many books to read in that week. So I am sneaking this one over into Crime Week because 52 Pickup is definitely a crime novel. I'm also listening to an audiobook, A Rage in Harlem by Chester Himes. This is a reread for me or a re-listen. Um, it is narrated by Samuel L. Jackson and he has to be one of the finest book narrations I've ever listened to. He is just a delight to listen to. He gives the voice of his characters real oomph and panaz and it's just wonderful to listen to and the story is is really good as well. Now one of the reasons I picked that as a reread is one of the other books I wanted to, to read for this week is Cotton Comes to Harlem also by Chester Himes um, and this is is part of his uh, Harlem series of books. This is set I believe in the 30s or 40s in Harlem about, about two detectives solving crimes and um, I just wanted to re-familiarize re myself with a rage in Harlem, so I'll be ready to pick up a cotton it comes to Harlem. I will also be reading The War Against the Mafia, The Executioner Book One by Don Pendleton. Um, this is a book just recently read by Michael K. Vaughn. He was inspired by the evil mastermind um, Criminali because he just read a Don Pendleton Executioner book. And I had this on my Kindle for years and years, so I'm just now picking it up. After that, I will probably be reading Death Wish by Brian Garfield. And this is the novel that was the basis of the movie Death Wish by uh, starring, um, oh, what was his name again? Charles Ronson. Yeah, I had a momentary lapse of uh, remembering. So those are the books that I intend to read this week. Thank you for watching. Oh, and that puts me up to 19 out of 100 books. That means I have 81 more books to go before I can start buying on a regular schedule. And I don't know if I'll ever go back. I, I've actually been really sort of enjoying this, this band. It's, it's very freeing not to have to buy all these Kindle books that are on sale that I can just say, nope, not buying that. So thank you for watching and have a good day. Goodbye.